What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D video. I don't know why I said it that way, I just thought I would like catch you guys off guard, you guys are so used to the same thing every day. Um, but yeah, so what I want to talk about, and I've spoiled the entire list already, I have already shown you the entire list, but I want to talk about five Pokemon that I think are actually pretty underrated in Regulation D that can do some work, and I've actually had a decent amount of success running these things, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. If you guys enjoy this damn point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's my comment question of the day, which is, what is the most underrated Pokemon in Regulation D? And for those of you in the comment sections who are going to tell me something that is definitely not underrated and is rather just a niche pick that is kind of fun, um, go for it. You know, go for it. It's probably not underrated though. Anyways, let's get into it. So, uh, these are my five Pokemon that I think should see some more usage there are like other pokemon in the format um but i tried to stick to things that see like almost not zero but like they're they're way lower than i would expect them to be at um but yeah let's go ahead and just start off with you know what i'm gonna go in reverse order because i can talk about wo chen for ages so sneezler i've actually been absolutely annihilated by a particular sneezler team like two or three times on the ladder um, and basically, Sneasler is really, really solid with Unburdened Psychic Seed. So the set that I've been running into is usually paired with an Ndidi, obviously. Ndidi Female will set up a Psychic Surge and also has access to Follow Me, Helping Hand, Trick Room if you want to be crazy. But, you know, the usual, right? The usual set. And when you pair this with a Sneasler, not only do you prevent Fake Out, but you activate the Psychic Seed, granted Unburdened, meaning it's double speed, so 155 allows it at speed, uh, to outspeed everything, including Iron Bundle at plus one. Um, and it has decent special bulk at that point. So if you max out the HP and give it a little bit of spit off, a little bit of defense, Psychic Seed activates, get a 50% increase to your special defense stat, um, and you just invest the rest into attack with like an Adamant Nature, uh, give it Swords Dance, Acrobatics, Dire Claw, and Close Combat and Terra Flying, this set is very annoying and it's a really solid duo on lead. Like there are, there are not a lot of like combos that can prepare for this mode as well as just whatever you have in the back. You can throw this onto like a Trick Room team, onto like a Hyper Offense team, and Sneezer itself is just very powerful. 130 attack is nothing to sneeze at. I don't know what the term is. Sneeze? Cough? Scoff? That's it. Uh, nothing to scoff at. Uh, basically, after a Swords Dance, it's going to have double that, you know, that attack stat will go up to, uh, what is it, that's 18 times 2, what is it, that's 36, that's uh, 366, I think, I, I don't like doing math on camera, I'm probably wrong, um, but yeah, so that comboed with Stab Acrobatics after Terra Flying with no item means it's 110 base power, that's a very powerful move at plus 2, Dire Claw is also very difficult to deal with because it just has a chance to be stupid. Um, that 50% chance to either sleep, poison, or paralyze has won me so many games when I run this Pokemon. I've gotten more sleeps than I deserve. I think it's a very dumb Pokemon. And of course, close combat, while you, while you will lose that special defense boost, it's not like you were really using it for the spit death boost. You're mostly using it to activate Unburdened. Uh, so that, and also to get, you know, stab acrobatics to max power. So this Pokemon is very, very annoying. If we look at things in the metagame that this thing can just absolutely obliterate, it obliterates Rillaboom. It can actually deal with Urshifu okay with acrobatics. It does pretty well into it. Um, you can obliterate, obliterate, obliterate Fluttermane with that Spit F boost and Dire Claw. Chen Pao goes down, Heatran goes down, um, Amoongus goes down. There aren't a lot of things that can take poison, fighting, and flying coverage, especially when you have stab on all three. It's a very strong Pokemon, and I'm honestly surprised I haven't seen it as much as other things. And I think it's starting to pick up, because um, I faced a lot of these in 1600s on the ladder. Next up, we're just going in reverse order, is Moltres. Moltres, you might be thinking, what does Moltres do? Why is, why is Moltres a thing? Well, actually, Moltres is pretty notorious in singles as a defensive staple. And in doubles, it can do the same thing. In fact, in, um, not GS Cup. Well, I guess GS Cup. In Series 10 VGC 2022, we actually ran Defensive Moltres to beat Zacian. Zacian was a Pokemon that was a very powerful physical attacker. And Moltres is one of the few Pokemon that could just wall it out. It, you know, resists Play Rough. It resists, it resists Sacred Sword. It resists um, Behemoth Blade. And it has access to Flame Body, 
as well as decent recovery with like a roost if you want to run that over protect um and this pokemon is able to switch in on physical attackers burn them and just wall them out and it's just a really good utility mon with good special attack hurricane heat wave is great coverage you hit a lot of things for that and if the rain is up you can even run this thing on a rain team to be honest to deal with like you know grass types um it's it's very good uh terra grass also solves a lot of the issues that moltres had before with that bad defensive typing it's going to allow moltres to not only ignore rage powder ignore spore but resists uh resist surging strikes from opposing urshifu rapid strike and actually i forgot to pop this into a damage calculator let me do that really fast okay here i am in the damage calculator ursa urshifu if we were to put mystic water urshifu rapid strike you can see that the citrus berry actually saves you and allows you to live mystic water surging strikes from urshifu if you terastalize then it's not even doing 30 percent. so that is a guaranteed or a possible five hit ko and if they're not mystic water if they're just running like you know focus ash or whatever if we just turn that off um then yeah that surging strikes is going to bounce off you it's a possible six hit ko after citrus berry recovery so you wall out urshifu not only that, but because they're hitting you three times, the Urshifu is also very likely to get burned. Each one of those hits has a 30% chance to burn. I don't know what the total chance to get burned is off of a full surging strikes, but if we status thing, if we status this thing um, and give it the burn condition, that means that it's only going to be doing 11% to the uh, Terra Grass Moltres with all three hits. And if you're not terastalized, if you're still this and they get burned off of the first one, you're actually going to take like a ton of surging strikes. You have a 99% chance uh, to be three hit KO'd after the citrus if they're burned. That is really, really funny. Like, Moltres can wall this thing out. And there's just a lot of things in the format it deals well with. Rillaboom is something that cannot beat Moltres. Chen Pao, while it can hit it with like an ice move, it doesn't beat Moltres outright. And if you want to, Terra Water Moltres is probably pretty decent as well to beat Chen Pao as well. You just lose the benefits of the grass typing, meaning that, you know, you're not going to resist electric moves, which Moltres obviously would want. Um, and also you're not going to get those uh, rage powder and just powder move benefits of just ignoring both of those. So Moltres being able to do with that is very solid. Iron Hands doesn't like Moltres. Any physical attacker that makes contact just does not like Moltres. It's a very good Pokemon and I like it quite a bit. Next up is um, Articuno Galar. I think that Articuno Galar is one of the biggest benefiters of Terrastalization. I've seen quite a few running around. I think that Terra Fairy is one of the better sets. Basically Articuno Galar... Um, is a Pokemon that has access to competitive, and with Landorus running around, it's very easy to get that activated. Um, there's, you know, a couple of other Intimidate Pokemon that exist in the format. I think I've seen a few Gyarados. Yeah, there's like a Gyarados there. Um, occasionally, you'll still see an Arcanine. They're not as common. But yeah, if you get like Intimidated, if you get Icy Wind dropped, if you get anything, Articuno Galar gets plus two special attack off of its base 125. That's really solid. And once again, it's an issue of having a bad defensive typing. Psychic Flying is not the best. But with Terrastalization, it can fix that with Terra Fairy, um, which is not like a, you know, synergistic defensive typing other than resisting dark uh, and bug and stuff. Um, but it's really solid just like as an offensive thing. If you run like Terra Blast, does it get D-Gleam? It doesn't. If you run Terra Blast, that actually hits fairly hard at plus two. Um, it's, a, it's like weaker than Moon Blast, right? But it's single target, so it's stronger than Dazzling Gleam. Um, this Pokemon also has access to both Tailwind and Trick Room. I've actually seen Trick Room see a lot more usage because Articuno Galar can threaten things with a competitive boost that want to intimidate partners like Partner uh, um, Iron Hands is one that I've run a few times, Partner Ursa Luna, those things that you want to intimidate or burn or whatever. If you switch in an intimidate user and give that Articuno plus two, now you have to deal with plus two Freezing Glare, which is not fun at all. It is just a very uh, solid attacker in this format due to the fact that they gave it um, terrestrialization. I think that Articuno in previous formats could have been pretty good as well, um, but it's terrestrialization that really gives it that little niche it needs to go um, above and beyond. It also does have access to like flying moves, which are really solid. You know, you obviously have like air slash and hurricane and stuff, but um, I think that uh, as we go on, we might see Articuno Galar uh, see a little bit more usage. And also there's a set that I ran once with room service, you can actually, you hit like a speed tier where, was it? Can you hit, I, I forgot what it was, but like in VGC 2022, I was able to like run one that would under speed like certain things under trick room, but it could also like activate, it could also like work under tailwind and stuff. So Articuno is one of the few decent room service users if you want to get like really crazy with it. But yeah, it's very standard, like what makes it good. 
Um, I just think that it could see a little bit more competitive usage with what's common in the format right now. And also Terra Water is not bad as a typing for it. Um, you could even run like Terra Water, Terra Blast, and now it becomes even more threatening to a lot of different cores. It's going to resist like Urshifu Rapid Strike. Um, it's going to resist Chen Pao. You'll have access to Terra Blast to beat Heatran. And if we actually take a look at it, we're sort of starved for competitively viable special attacking water types. Most of the good ones are physical attackers. So if you can get a decent special attacking water type, like a makeshift Milotic, then yeah, like Articuno Galar can sort of function in that role. So um, I think it sees, it, it deserves a little bit more usage. This one, I'm dumbfounded as to why people have been using it. This is um, the one that I used on my team to hit pretty like high ladder. I think I peaked at like 1670, um, like a not a week ago, but like two or three days ago um, with a stall team using um, not only Garganical, but Wochen, but obviously, you know, that's just how I play. But Garganical is phenomenal into this format. It is, it is absurd that people have not figured this out, in fact. So I, the existence of Heatran on like a ton of teams means that you can just run like a decent defensive typing on your Garganical and you just beat a ton of things. Uh, Terra Water is one that not a lot of teams can deal with. Terra Water Garganical with like Salt Cure, Protect, Recover, and then like a filler move. I'm a big fan of Wide Guard. Um, however, I don't think there are actually like a ton of spread moves in this format since like Fluttermane is a little bit lower usage. I guess like the Bleak Wind Storm, like those sort of moves are like something that you can uh, go with. But yeah, um, just like these three moves with like Leftovers and a, de a decent defensive Terra is going to allow you to beat Urshifu Rapid Strike because Terra Water means that you're taking nothing from Urshifu Rapid Strike. You can recover off all the damage. And because it's a water type that also Terra's into a water type, it's going to take 25% from uh, Salt Cure at the end of each turn. Rillaboom, if you run Terra Flying like I've been, actually also loses to Garganical because um, it just can't beat it. It like gets walled out by like a physically defensive um, flying type. Uh, Dragonite does not do well into it unless Chen Pao is on the field, which is why I run it with uh, Terra Water, um, Wo Chen by its side. Fluttermane can possibly two shot it, but Heatran is another Pokemon that just gets absolutely obliterated. Um, they have to Terra to not get uh, KO'd in four turns by Salt Cure. Uh, and if they take any chip, it's like th two or three turns. But yeah, the existence of like these Pokemon just allow this Pokemon to do well. Uh, like, Hisui and Gudra also doesn't do well into it because a lot of Hisui and Gudras will actually just go like Terra Steel for pure defensive. Um, I've seen Terra Water as well. Terra Water is another great defensive typing for Gudra. Both of those lose to Salt Cure. That is like awful for it. Palafin loses. Gyarados loses. Um, what else? Golden Go, a Pokemon that is always, almost always either Terra Water or Terra Steel. Here, I'll make a bet with you. Yeah, Terra Water. Um, it always loses to a Garganical that has Wide Guard and Salt Cure and a defensive Terra typing. And yes, it is a little bit of a defensive Terra sink. Like you're going to end up using your Terra in like most games with it, but it is very solid into a ton of things in this format. And I've had a lot of success with it. So I think um, it's something that people should really look into. Uh, and I, you know, you, you know me, I'm usually right about these sort of things. If you face an Orthworm, they're very annoying. You can beat it with Garg too, it's hilarious. Final Pokemon, I'm sorry you all knew it was coming. Everyone who watches me knows I am the Wo Chen enthusiast. I am his strongest soldier. Wo Chen is absurdly underrated in this format. Here's why. Here's why. Let me explain why. So, Urshifu Signal Strike and Urshifu Rapid Strike are everywhere. Dragonite Chen Pao are everywhere. It is the format of Chen Pao plus physical offensive Pokemon. You can't intimidate them. You can't intimidate anything but the Chen Pao. Defensive Terra Water Wo Chen. Just, it just beats so many things. Let me steal a set from a team I'm working on right now. Ignore that I'm just leaking this whole team. Um, this is the set that I've been running, right? Leftovers, Tablets of Ruin, obviously. Protect, Leech Seed, Pollen Puff, Foul Play, Terra Water. Super, super physically defensive. This set, you're not gonna believe me when I say what this set does. You know what, I'm just gonna show you. I'm just gonna show you this set. Ready? For those of you who are still concerned about Ursaluna, fear not, fear not. Wo Chen is here. Defensive set versus Ursaluna. Trick Room Guts. Let's tear a normal. Bam. Bam. You literally live that. You literally live that. If you get a Leech Seed off, it's over. It's over. And also you're helping your partners 
Wo Chen is benevolent. So effectively, Wo Chen is the walking reflect. If he was, if he was a, you know, a um, paradox Pokemon, his his paradox name would be Walking Reflect. But the difference between Tablets of Ruin and Reflect and Intimidate is that Reflect and Intimidate don't work in the context of Chen Pao, Dragonite, um, and Urshifu because Urshifu bypasses your Reflect and your Intimidate. Dragonite can't be intimidated, and Chen Pao has um, what is it? Has Sword of Ruin, which. Like, yeah, that's strong, but Tablets of Ruin just undoes it. So these things are hitting like Sword of Ruin doesn't exist, and Wo Chen is already pretty decently physically defensive, so it allows it to beat these things. So basically, the game plan that Wo Chen has into a lot of these teams is remove the Chen Pao, and you win if you don't play dumb. It is really good into a lot of things right now, and I am just, I, I am upset that no one has caught on. No one has caught on to this fact that like Wo Chen solves the, uh, the issue of of Urshifu Rabbit Strike being everywhere. And I might be a little biased. I might be a little biased. I may have run Wo Chen at every major this year. But it is what it is. I am just simply right. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And yeah, have a nice night.